this shit! Triple THS is brought to you by DraftKings.com and the support of 165 Patreon backers like you. Uh, some motherfuckers? It's been a whole year, so it's probably time for me to do that fucking Street Fighter here to review. You know? Uh, Street Fighter came out in 1994. And it stars the baddest motherfucker ever, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And it was written in a day by the guy who wrote Die Hard. And I think you'll find that Die Hard must have taken more than a day to write. Alright, let's go sit down in the theater. So in case you're not familiar with Street Fighter 2, the game that this fucking insane-ass movie is based on, let me give you a quick rundown so that you know what the fuck's going on. Uh, fucking M. Bison, who's actually called Vega first, before lawyers were like, you can't name this motherfucker who's clearly Mike Tyson... Mike Bison. Uh, he runs this fucking group of evil hitters known as the Shadaloo. And he's like, I need some more hitters for my crew so I can take over the world. Because all he had at the time were these three main hitters. The Boxer Balrog, formerly known as Mike Bison. The Cage Fighting Matador Ninja, that's actually what this motherfucker is, look it up. His name's Vega, but he was actually called Balrog first. And his fucking Muay Thai fighter, Sagat, who's the only one of these fucking guys whose name has always been his name because... He was the last boss in the first Street Fighter game. So anyway, Bison holds this fucking fighting tournament to get all the baddest motherfuckers on the planet together so he can brainwash them and use them to take over the world even though they're all just hand-to-hand -hand fighters when fucking tanks and shit exist, but whatever. The fighters who show up to the tournament are Ryu, who's a fucking real-ass hitter from Japan who wants to fucking just be the best ever and probably has nunchucks. Ken, who's just... Ryu, but America Ryu. Guile, an American soldier with crazy fucking hair who wants revenge against Bison for killing his homie. Chun-Li, a Chinese cop who never missed leg day and wants revenge against Bison for killing her homie dad. Blanca, a literal fucking monster from Brazil that doesn't know shit about jiu-jitsu. E Honda, a sumo wrestler like Nate. Zangief, who is a basic-ass sambo fighter out of Russia who's definitely on steroids. And Dalsim, who did so much fucking yoga that he could fucking breathe fire and kick motherfuckers from like 90 feet away, apparently. And probably has some fire-ass weed. After re-releasing the game like 17 fucking times, they all also added Fei Long, T Hawk, Cammy, and DJ, but nobody gives a shit about them. So that's basically the idea of what Street Fighter 2 the game is. And I want you to fucking take everything I just taught you about Street Fighter 2 and throw it out the fucking window, because this movie doesn't follow any of that shit. Alright, so the movie takes place in a war-torn East Asian country called Chattaloo, because fuck the game just just right away. General M. Bison and his army captured Allied Nations relief workers, and Bison wants $20 billion from the AN in three days, or he's gonna fucking kill the shit out of the hostages. And they wanted to just call the Allied Nations the UN. But the UN was like, don't fucking make us a part of this bullshit. Anyway, while Bison straight up murdering AN soldiers with his bare fucking hands, because that's what he likes to do in the morning, he's watching a news report about his evil ass by Chun-Li, Balrog, and E. Honda, who are now fucking news people for some reason. Colonel Guile, the leader of the AN forces, who has an American flag tattoo and a strong Belgian accent. He's just kicking it by his tank with his homie T-Hawk when he decides to interrupt Chun-Li's broadcast and deliver a message to Bison on the air. And then somehow Bison and Guile are able to talk to each other through the fucking TV. Even though that's not how TVs work. And that was apparently Guile's plan because, like, he knew that they could fucking talk to each other through a TV. So he's trying to keep the conversation going to track the fucking location of Bison's secret base. And he's keeping the conversation going by talking shit like, Some motherfucker, I'm gonna beat your punk ass with a bike lock. I better not see you in Stockton, motherfucker. What? And also to my homie Charlie, who's been captured. Don't worry, man, we're gonna be there soon to save you. You mean a lot to me, Charlie. So I really hope that by saying your name over and over again and sounding super desperate to save you and, like, that you mean a lot to me, that, you know, fucking Bison doesn't somehow use that against you. So the broadcast ends and uh, Bison uses that against him. He looks over at this fucking captured AN soldier's dog tags which say Carlos Blanca and Bison's like, oh, so you're Charlie because you know, fucking Carlos and Charlie are apparently the same thing. So he takes Carlos Charlie to his lab to turn him into a fucking juiced out fucking monster soldier and this dude, Dr. Dalsim, he's there against his will and uh, his job is to show Charlie fucked up videos from the internet, I guess, while other scientists pump this motherfucker full of steroids. So, they're basically trying to turn him into Joe Rogan. Uh, so now that the main conflict has been laid out, it's time for, you know, a fucking subplot. Because we have to have every fucking fighter from the game in the movie. So we cut to some underground fight club, and Ken and Ryu are there to sell guns to Sagat, who's a crime lord in Chattaloo. But they're actually just selling him toy guns to rip him off. And Sagat figured that out somehow, so he pulls the toy guns on them, and he's like, What's my motherfuckers, you afraid of your own shit? Which doesn't make any sense, because, like, if they were real fucking guns... I mean, how does owning them not make them, you know, fucking deadly? Anyway, they shoot nerf balls at Ken and Ryu, and then a Strike Force Nashville brawl breaks out, and Scott's impressed because Ken and Ryu are both hitters. So he decides instead of killing them, that he's gonna make them cage fighters so that he can make money off them. So Scott's basically Dana White. And uh, Ryu's up first against their champion, Vega, who's the only character in this movie that seems to fit exactly with the video game. But before they start their fight, the main plot of the movie literally comes crashing through the fucking wall. Guile just plows into the building in a tank, probably killing hundreds of people. And then he arrests everybody that's still alive. So yeah, that's the first 12 minutes of the movie, by the way. That's how they fucking introduce you to this crazy fucking 
insane ass world. The next day, Giles at his morning meeting and he's like fucking chilling with his crew talking about weed or some shit. When some fucking fake ass waiter suddenly becomes a ninja and he tries to kill Guile, but Guile's like, fuck out of here with that weak ass amateur style and just fucking drops him. The waiter had a Shadaloo Tong tattoo, which is the name of Sagat's gang. So from that, somehow Guile figures out that Sagat is selling guns to Bison, which means Sagat must know where Bison's secret base is apparently. So he looks out the window and Sagat and Vega are trying to throw down with Ken and Ryu in the prison yard. And with all this bullshit information, he devises the dumbest fucking plan in history, but it works, so I respect him or whatever. Guile pulls Ken and Ryu out of the prison camp and he fucking shows them how fucked up Shadaloo is. And then he comes up with a plan where he's going to have them break out of the AN prison camp and befriend Sagat and Vega by stealing a truck. But Guile put a tracking device on the truck. And then for no fucking reason, they were going to shoot Guile dead as they escape. But he's not actually dead. He was just fucking selling wolf tickets. Because apparently breaking out of prison and stealing the truck would not be enough to convince Sagat and Vega that they were fucking bad guys. Apparently they had to fucking kill Guile too. Anyway, so as the truck is leaving out of fucking nowhere, fucking Chun-Li throws her microphone, which is apparently also a tracking device, onto the truck as well. Let me just say that one more time in case you didn't realize how fucking stupid that is. Uh, the news reporter, who up to this point in the movie has just been a news reporter, she takes her fucking microphone, and it's also a fucking tracking device, and she throws it at the truck. So the news hits that Colonel Guile's dead, even though he's fucking faking it, and Bison's sad because he wanted to fucking show him he was a hitter. And then he goes on this long-ass rant about how he wants to kill everyone in the world who opposes him, and then the world will be peaceful, and McDonald's will want to come to the city that he makes, because I don't fucking know. Back at the AN camp, chun getting interference on her fucking tracking device microphone. And it's from Guile's tracking device, so the signal's originating from the AN headquarters. So again, out of fucking nowhere, Chun-Li becomes a ninja and sneaks in to find the fucking tracking equipment. And it turns out it's in the morgue right next to Guile's not dead body. But he's fucking laying there under a sheet like he's dead. Like, this motherfucker's been there for hours, just waiting for somebody to come up so he can be like, fucking fuck you, motherfuckers. I'm alive. What's up? I sold you wolf tickets and you ate them up. They try to arrest Chun-Li, even though she said that she was only tracking the truck because she wants to kill Bison because he killed her dad. But they don't give a fuck. So she fucking ninjas her ass out the fucking window and escapes because T-Hawk and Cammy are the fucking worst. And then we cut to some crazy ass tent city black market where Bison and his troops and fucking Sagat and his boys along with their new friends Ken and Ryu are partying the fuck up. Bison and Sagat are negotiating a deal for some fucking guns, apparently. Meanwhile, Chun-Li, a world famous reporter, Balrog, a famous boxer turned cameraman, and E. Honda, a famous sumo turned major network news producer, have somehow purchased a bunch of shit that makes it look like they're a fucking legitimate magic act with a fucking truck that has their logo on it and stuff and fucking costumes. And apparently they fucking learned how to actually do some fucking magic and in the time it took them to get to this fucking black market tent city from the AN headquarters, they somehow managed to get themselves booked as a fucking magic act for Sagat and Bison's party. This is the most fucking ridiculous thing that's ever happened in any fucking movie. What the fuck? This is some fucking Looney Tune shit. After the magic act, Ken goes chasing Chun Li because he wants to fuck while Bison and Sagat start negotiating for the weapons. Ken follows Chun Li into their magical tent and immediately gets dropped. Ryu goes looking for Ken in the magical tent and then he gets fucking dropped too. Chun Li knows the breakout was fake and knows that Ken and Ryu are actually working for Guile, so. She wants to give them a heads up because Chun-Li's plan is to drive their magical branded truck full of explosives right into Bison and Sagat's party because Sagat and Bison ruined Chun-Li, E. Honda, and Balrog's lives and they want revenge. Meanwhile, Bison and Sagat's crews are about to start fucking each other up because Bison wants to pay Sagat with fucking wolf money that he just made up that has his fucking face on it because he's fucking crazy. And then the fucking dumbest shit in history of dumb shit happens. Fucking Chun-Li tells Ken and Ryu they have 10 minutes to, I don't fucking know, what the fuck. But for some reason, they go back into the party because they're fucking dumbasses. And once they see the Sagat and Bison are beefing, they for some reason try to step in the middle of it because I don't know then they fucking turn snitch on Chun-Li who apparently had time to make a fucking video that would play for Bison and Sagat to let them know who was attacking them and that they were about to be attacked you know instead of just fucking running the truck into the tent and killing everyone so all the fucking bad guys escape and Chun-Li, E. Honda, and Balrog all get captured and taken to Bison's fucking secret base they send Honda and Balrog to a torture room and Bison tells Chun-Li he's gonna give her a private interview since Ken and Ryu turn states they're now considered Team Bison even though they think they're still the good guys for some reason and Sagat now apparently has no problem with Bison because their crews are all chilling at the secret base together with Ken and Ryu's tracking devices now at the secret base the AN forces finally know where Bison's hiding so they plan on fucking you know running up on the base and rescuing all the fucking relief workers and killing bison and shit and they're right about to leave when this fucking dork comes up to them and is like hey they and voted and decided to cancel the assault and just we're just gonna give bison 20 billion dollars because you know fuck it right and guy's like the fuck homie so he gives a speech about how he doesn't give a fuck and how bison's not a hitter and like has he ever had a gun held to his head you know so guy tells everybody he's like i'm gonna go fuck this dude up and if you guys want to come along you know let's go 
you know, let's go fuck up some shit. And the soldiers are all jacked. And Guile's now a war criminal with a private army of mercenaries to do his bidding. So they start driving their boats towards the secret bison base. And Guile puts on a mixtape of his homie to remind him of his homie, I guess. But before they get their boats to the base, a bunch of shit happens. Dr. Dalsim secretly changes the bad shit they've been showing Charlie to good shit. Because that's apparently how, you know... You make someone good or evil, you just fucking show them good or bad videos, even though they're a fucking adult and have a fully developed brain or whatever. But this fucking guard notices that Charlie's watching some good shit, so he tries to kill Dalsim, and like, as they're fucking fighting, they accidentally release Charlie, and he starts walking around like a dumbass. Honda and Balrog break out of their binds in the torture room and are immediately met by Ken and Ryu, who found them by simultaneously memorizing two sides of a map without first explaining to each other that that's what they were planning to do, which is the most fucking ridiculous shit ever, and I've already said that three times in this movie. Anyway, they all become friends again after a little bit of convincing. Chun-Li gets taken to Bison's fuck pad and is dressed up in fetish gear, but Bison didn't realize that Chun-Li's a hitter, so she starts fucking him up and probably would have killed him, but her stupid-ass friends burst in and are like, hey, Chun-Li, you need some help? And she looks at him, she's like, no, man, I fucking got this, homie. But then she looks back at Bison, and he's in a secret glass chamber, and the room fills up with gas, and everybody gets knocked the fuck out. So now Ken, Ryu, Chun-Li, Balrog, and Honda get brought into the main room of Bison's headquarters when DJ, oh yeah, DJ's in this movie, he lets Bison know that some hitters are running up on them in an invisible boat. The AN have invisible boats, just fucking don't worry about it. Guile reveals to Bison that he's still alive and he's driving said invisible boat. So Bison hops in his fucking Bowser flying cup thing and he has some fucking Street Fighter 2 controls that apparently run the defenses around his base. And he blows up Guile's boat, but they escape and he swims to the base. The three-day timer runs out on Bison's ransom demands for the AN relief workers. And the AN doesn't pay him shit. So he tells the relief workers that he's going to unleash a wild beast on them to murder the shit out of them. But he doesn't know that Charlie's already free and he watched good movies and shit. Guile sneaks into the base through the lab where he finds Charlie. And before he could even consider what some of his options might be, now that his fucking best friend's some kind of monster, he goes straight for shooting him in the fucking head. But before he can blow his best friend's brains out, seconds after finding him, Dalsim pops up and he's like, Don't kill your homie, me? What, just because he can't tell right from wrong? Which is a pretty fucking bad argument for why you shouldn't kill this motherfucker. But right then, Bison calls for Charlie to be unleashed on the AN relief workers. So Guile hops in the pod that's supposed to bring Charlie up to the main room. And uh, fucking surprise, Guile has fucking magical powers now. Because he jumps like 300 fucking feet through the air to kick Bison right in his punk ass chest. And then Guile starts shooting everybody. And then Bison runs over to the security camera to see what the fuck happened to Charlie. You know, instead of dealing with Guile, who's now shooting everybody. And he sees a video of Charlie fighting bison troopers. So he checks the videos that Charlie's been watching, and it's fucking dolphins and shit. So he smashes the monitor all pissed off, because this movie's fucking ridiculous. All right, so the last 30 minutes of runtime is just one giant clusterfuck of a fight sequence, and everybody's now dressed up like their characters from the games, and suddenly everyone can do their special moves. Balrog, Chung Lee, Cammy, and T-Hawk save the hostages and help the generic AN soldiers take on the generic bison troopers. Zangief, oh yeah, Zangief's in this, by the way. Him and E-Honda square off in a super heavyweight bout that ends in a draw. Kid decides to bail on everyone because he's consistently been a piece of shit. But then when he sees his boy Ryu's about to get jumped by Sagat and Vega, he joins in, they beat the fuck out of him. And of course, Guile and Bison have a fight. So basically, Guile just beats the shit out of Bison and literally fucking kills him with some spinning shit. But Bison has like a fucking backup generator and he brings himself back to life. But now he has like fucking superpowers like lightning hands and he can fly. So apparently the only answer to a flying lightning shooting unkillable Bison is literally the final sequence of kicks from Bloodsport. Am I fucking kidding? Van Damme does the same spinning shit three times, just like Bloodsport. And Bison explodes for some reason. And then there's a self-destruct countdown for the entire base because fucking why not i guess dj steals a case from bison's fuck pad and bounces along with sagat zangief realizes he was a bad guy this whole time and never got paid so he turns good and helps the rest of the heroes escape with all the hostages guile doubles back to the lab to save his monster friend charlie that he planned on killing the second he saw him but now dalsim who for some reason has lost all of his hair tells guile that they'll die together so that charlie doesn't have to be scared even though he was the one that convinced Kyle not to fucking shoot Charlie, but whatever the fuck. So they just sit there and fucking die like idiots, and the base blows up. DJ and Sagat find out that the case they stole is only filled with bison dollars, and is worth jack shit. All the heroes get out in time except for Guile, so now everyone's all sad and shit, because he's dead. Including Zangief, who everyone just accepted as a good guy, even though he's been one of Bison's top dudes. But guess what, guys? Surprise, Guile's not dead. He fucking made it. And then he sexually harasses Chun-Li. And then they do victory poses. And yeah, guys, that's fucking it. That's that's a fucking Street Fighter movie. Uh, I give Street Fighter my highest rating of 10 bongs out of 10. This movie's fucking hilarious. And it's even funnier when you're high as fuck. <laughs> so definitely go see this shit in theaters if it's 1994. And if not, you know, you can fucking rent this shit, I guess, or whatever. Watch it with your homies. One of the best movies ever made. Uh, so yeah, guys, it's been another hitter review. Uh, join me next time in probably another year when I review the realest shit ever, Rocky Three. Hey, real quick, I got the March Patreon, homie, that needs shout-outs. The motherfucker Eric Marcotte, sorry if I said your name wrong, homie. Sambo Stopper Nicole P. Cardiovascular Surgeon William Macon. The Reams need for fucking up heavyweights. Soul Perry, because he knows I beat Connor both fights. 
The real homie Charlie Rock 129, Ninja Shit Master Lucky McKay, James Wheat because he's always ready with the shurikens, Chris Slay for making me ramen noodles that one time, my dude from Inglewood, Bill Lawton, Dennis Hopper's best performance, Blue Velvet, Richard Herrera because the last time he gave a fuck was 1993, The Rock's personal trainer, George Fisher, Johnny Johnson for teaming up with me in Mario Kart Double Dash, your boy Burst Kapelkovich for holding it the fuck down, 18th degree black belt to keep it to 100, Coach Antoine Flawless Victory MMA, Lee Downs because he taught me how to Dougie, the great and powerful Al Bravo because he's both great and powerful. Ross McKillop for giving me the blood code when I bought Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. My best friend in seventh grade, Jonah Peterson. Human X choke machine checking Palermo. Alfonso Diaz because he's rapping Diaz for life. Literally his last name. Man with the strongest left ring finger in the world, Eddie Roberts. Tyler Holmes for bringing his own bag of m ms to the theater and sharing it with me. The homie you call when the shit goes down, King of Evil. Well-respected archaeologist, Tanya S. Jean-Carlos Caballero because his stock can slap somebody if they get out of line. 13 nuts because that's how many I dropped on Habib and his homie's foreheads. The people's bear for being the baron of the peoples. My own associate, Full Metal Pete, we call him the chopper. Adam Secor because he taught Jean-Claude Van Damme how to ban damn. OG hitter from Stockton, Chris Molina. Jack Sparrow because he beat Metal Gear Solid 3 on European Extreme. MMA Marks Podcast for finding all the hidden tapes and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Honorary DS brother, Dave Wilder. The Hamlet of Shit talking Derek Weston. Dean Roshop for having a power level over 9,000. Fred D. Hodge because the D stands for Stock 209. Risk 2 for letting me use the Dreamcast to play Jet Set Radio. My cousin's best friend who got me that bike lock, Matt Dear Love. The final boss in Dark Souls 4, Nick Roma. Lubomir Black Ops because they're always ready to throw a bottle of Connor for me. Ted Vulcan for fixing the automatic windows on my Honda Civic. And Ben Beard for recommending I skip the first part of Killing Joke animated movie. That entire story had nothing to do with the plot, was only added to make the movie feature link, motherfucker. Whoa.